We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing? You know, uh, I said it. Uh, I said it on the Thursday show. I'll say it on the Friday show. I'm not going to complain. How's that? Well, especially, especially, especially this weekend with the the number of games, interesting games this weekend. I mean, it's not a bad week. Uh, the evening. Interesting. Interesting games. The evening slate is terrible. Yes. The evening slate of games is Garbo. Absolute nonsense. Terrible. The only decent game in the in the primetime window is NC State at Clemson. And the way things are shaping right now, that might be a bit of a weather game, <laughs> a bit of a weather game. <laughs> Um, I got things to say about that one, but let's, let's start off with the top here. So we got six games we are going to pick from. And, uh, the seventh one is the Ohio state Rutgers game. You can listen to our Thursday episode to find out who we picked. Spoiler alert. It's the uh, team in Scarlet. Uh, but did we pick them minus 40 <laughs> and a half that you'll have to listen to the Thursday episode for? Cause that's a, that's a big number. That is, that is. So let's let's start from the top. We got we got a trio of nooner games here, Jared. Trio of noon games, and we'll start in the Big Ten, where we got Michigan heading on over to Iowa. I think Michigan lucked out in this one. Not a night game, but heading on over to Iowa to play a eleven Central Time game. Uh, uh, Michigan is a 10 and a half point favorite. What you got here, Jared? Um, taking a look at this game, we pick these through CBS, right? We do. Um, yes. Just as a, as a fun little statistical point, uh, minus 10 and a half, um, 30, excuse me, 20, only 23% of people are taking Iowa. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're seeing Michigan as a big favorite to win the game. I think they see Michigan as a top five team and they see Iowa as just being stinky doo doo. Is that that's my expert analysis? Yeah. Stinky doo doo. Yeah. Um, but I think Michigan, this Michigan. is a I think this is a game in which not a lot of points are scored by either team. And I tell you what, um, if you take a look at the over under it's only set to 42 points which is <laughs> yeah. which is about 21 points per team and to me in a game in which you only expect 42 points to be scored to give one of those teams a 10 and a half point advantage feels like a lot um i don't think iowa wins this football game but i do think that iowa keeps it much closer than Michigan fans will be happy with. Atta boy. So I'm picking Atta Iowa boy. to cover. Yeah. Yeah. It's damn straight. It is Iowa though, <laughs> but it Iowa's got Iowa. a good defense. So, this is why they don't win nomad because they have no offense, Jared, but they still have a good defense. Jared. And if the point spread is high as 10 and a half points, a good defense Jared. is good enough to get you there. A Jared. five to two final. I'd Michigan love to see has it. A, Michigan has a good defense too. I mean, they're only doesn't they're matter. Only letting, they're only letting up eleven points a game. Jared doesn't matter. Yeah, it's I, Iowa. I the, it doesn't matter. I think the the big thing is going to be can Iowa um, slow down Michigan here? Which, from what we saw against the Maryland team, uh, there, there's there's a good chance Iowa may be able to. Hold Michigan to under 30 points in this game. If they hold them to under 30, I'll take the Hawkeyes to uh, to keep this close here. Yeah, and I'll, I'll pick I'll pick the, the team in uh, black and gold here, black and gold, black and yellow. I don't know how they how they what what technical color they use, but I'll take the Hawkeyes here to cover. I'm gonna look that up because I also want to know. Uh, let us know how Buckeye Zach picked this game while I do that. Sure. Let me scroll down here. Oh, I was going to say Michigan score is averaging 50 points a game. Yes. 
we already cut we already talked about who they play blah 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 in previous episodes 50 points per game versus iowa scoring 17 points per game <laughs> yeah not not the greatest here all right so buckeye zach is our guest picker this week here uh, you can listen to more of what he had to say about the Rutgers Ohio State game in our previous episode. But for this one, Michigan and Iowa, he says Michigan proved what Big Ten play would do to them after their soft out uh, out of conference against Maryland. Iowa has the defense to contain. Give Iowa on slowing on slowing slowing down T ton. But I still but I still say Michigan wins. So he agrees with us for the most part. I, I know, Matt. Uh, yes, agreed. All right, moving on, moving on over to the SEC, sticking to the noon, um, noon game here. We have Kentucky against Ole Miss. I don't know. I don't know what the, how to hype this up. I'm just going to say Ole Miss is a six and a half point favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, Uh, yeah, you have Kentucky, you have Mississippi. Um, Kentucky is the top 10 team. Allegedly, Ole Miss is probably Allegedly. like an actual proper. <laughs> it is gold. Thank you, Buckeye Matt. I, okay. I looked up their branding. I, see, I was dumb. I actually like looked up their branding guide and most teams just put it up there and make it obvious. Iowa's branding guide is trying too hard. Like, okay, it's, so, it's trying so, too hard. Anyway, so, I should have just Googled the colors. Anyway, so you're saying you're so you're saying Kentucky, yeah, most I'm likely not, is is not a top ten team. And what were you saying about Ole Miss? I'd say they're probably pretty appropriately ranked. It. Why, like, why, why is that? Uh because there's not that many good teams, and it's not that hard to get the fourteen. Uh, they score a ton of points. They don't okay. let up a lot of points. And yes, you know I know they... they haven't played anybody, but yeah. you're also comparing. They almost, they almost lost to Tulsa last weekend, Jared. They almost lost to Tulsa. Well aware. I'm not saying this is a good team, but I'm, I also don't think Kentucky is a good team. So you see, you see the conundrum that I'm in. Uh-huh. Yeah. So six and a half in favor of Ole Miss. Yes, I agree. Uh, Gang land that both are pretenders. But who do you have in this one? Do you, does Ole Miss cover or or will Kentucky make this a close one? Um, I'm I really, really don't believe Kentucky's any freaking good. Like, and I know you can talk about Tulsa, um, but if we if we look at Kentucky, they barely beat. Northern Illinois, you know, okay. they, they had 31 points against Youngstown state, which is good. They beat Florida and everyone thinks that's amazing because they beat Florida, but Florida was garbage and they didn't even look all that good against Miami of Ohio either. So like we can talk about Ole Miss being in a shootout with Tulsa, which is stupid, but they also won 42 to nothing over Georgia tech, um, 59 to three over an FCS school. Um, you know, they comfortably beat Troy, although realistically you probably want to score more points in that game. I get it. I think the point I'm trying to make here, Kyle, and I'm sorry, I'm being very long winded getting there is <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I think I'm going to go with Ole Miss simply because I feel like they have um, a superior offense and can put up points. So what's, when in what's, doubt, what's, pick the quarterback. So who are you picking? Ole Miss. But you just said when in doubt, pick the quarterback. Yeah, I know what I said. But you're picking Ole Miss. I know what I said. Uh, Chad, Chad, are you are you letting him get away with this? <laughs> Neither of the quarterbacks are all that good. <laughs> I don't care how many points. I don't. I'm not convinced on Will Levis. Sorry. I don't care. Uh, I'm 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 going to I'm going to stick with your your thought here. When and Dale pick the quarterback, but I think I think Kentucky has the better quarterback here. So I think they'll keep it close here. 
I, I mean, Kentucky's gone on the road. They've gone to a hostile environment in Florida. Yes, Florida may not be a top 20 team that um, some people thought they were at one point in this season, but for going to Florida is not a, not an easy uh, thing to do and win there. So Kentucky's Kentucky's been able to do that. So I, I'll, I'll take Kentucky to be able to cover the six and a half. Check this out. Yards passing advantage Kentucky by about 90 yards per game. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yards rushing. All miss 280 <laughs> yards a game rushing. Yep. Kentucky 81. Yep. I said quarterback. I meant to say offense or I should have said offense. Not I should have said offense. You should have said offense. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh let's see. Our guest picker, Buckeye Zach says Kentucky and Ole Miss could either be nothing but offense or a slow scoring game of sloppiness. I'm not really sold on the Wildcats. Give me Ole Miss in this gimme game by a touchdown. So he's got Ole Miss to cover. All right, I guess I'm going solo, solo in that one. All right, and the last game in our noon slot here, heading over to Big 12. Nomad pick Kentucky as well. Um. We're heading over to the Big 12 country. We got Oklahoma and TCU, the Frog Horn. The Sooners are a six and a half point favorite. You got you got three and zero TCU and three and one Oklahoma. This this one was this one was tough for me because I mean you can. You you can look at what was done to Oklahoma last week. Lost to Kansas State. What was it? Four of the pa- pa- past five games or three of the past four, something like that. Struggling against Kansas State. But I think every time they lost to uh, Kansas State, Oklahoma always came back and just dominated offensively. And I, th- I think we'll see the same thing here. I think this is just the wrong week to play Oklahoma for TCU after Oklahoma lost to Kansas State. So I'll I'll take Oklahoma to uh, cover the six and a half points in this game. Oklahoma's two wins, excuse me, three wins, are is against UTEP, Kent, and Nebraska. Mm-hmm. I well, I what? dare you to tell me which one of I dare you to like rank those three teams which is a sad state for Nebraska, but here we are. <laughs> uh, TCU's probably, in or, par, par, probably in order that the most recent played would be best and then backwards. You, I had you until you said and, and, and then backwards, but moving forward. Um, TCU's last three wins against FBS opponents. Let's say last three wins against FBS opponents. SMU, Colorado. Uh, excuse me. No, that's a loss to ISU. Uh, and then they did. They do have a, a win over uh, someone called Tar. Tarleton Texans. The Tarleton Texans. Yes, sir. Five five dollars. If anyone can honestly tell me they've ever heard of the Tarlington Texans before. I dare you. <laughs> uh Zach. <laughs> <laughs> so who do you got here, Jared? Uh both of these teams appear to suck. Mm-hmm. Um TCU struggled against SMU last week. SMU sucks. Uh Oklahoma straight up lost to Kansas State. I I think both of these teams are sad, sad shells of what they once were. When in doubt, take the over, or not take the over, when in doubt. <laughs> I pulled a Kyle on that one. Uh, when in doubt, take the underdog. I'm in doubt. I'm taking the underdog. Give me TCU plus Ooh. six and a half. Ooh. Taking the horned can I, can frogs I, here. Can I also say what plays into this a bit? And this is a, this is a thing I like to do. Mm-hmm. Um, currently at six and a half. At six and a half, see him at at six and a half. 
83% of votes are going to, or of bets are going to Oklahoma, 17 to TCU. If I could add a when in doubt, when in doubt, pick the quarterback, when in doubt, uh, take the underdog. If I can add a when, if I can add one to that list, when in doubt, go against the crowd. You're adding too many things now, Jared. <laughs> you know, it's, it's right, no, 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 no. The better, better question here, Jared. Over under total points is 68 and a half. Ooh. I don't know. This is, I think this is going to be a good old Big 12 shootout here. So I will say this um, if you put the two averages together, points per game averages together, you get 86, (laughs) 87 if you want to round up. Um, But again, look at the opponents these teams have played so far. Um, Both teams have played one team with a pulse and lost those games. Ooh. Well, no, TCU is undefeated this year. They're three and zero. Excuse me that that's last year's game. Yes. All right. Uh, They've only played three that's... games. That was throwing me. Yeah, but guys, Zach here it says Big Twelve at this point could be anybody's conference. I haven't seen much of TCU this year. Well, I mean, n- n- nobody has now. <laughs> and Oklahoma is what it is. I don't see them dropping another game back to back. Look to either Oklahoma somehow explode or another lackluster Big 12 high scoring and boring shootout. Sooners win and cover with a touchdown. So you pretty much exactly what I was thinking. All right, we're moving to the 330 slot. We already went over Rutgers and Ohio State. So we'll go down to the SEC country here. And we got Alabama and Arkansas. Razorbacks. Yeah. Am I first? You are was first. That, was that pause for me? It is for you, Jared. All right. Because I know I know how much you like the uh, uh, Arkansas's uh, mascot. The Razorback? Do I? Mm-hmm. You do. Do I? I mean, I mean, I everybody, have... everybody, everybody in the chat likes uh, know, knows that you like you like the hogs. That's listen, I feel like chat is projecting that onto me. I feel like this is a classic projection situation. Uh yeah, say, point say whatever you want. Al- <laughs> Alabama on paper feels like the dominant team right now. Um and you could look at the opponents and say that Arkansas has played a much tougher schedule to this point. And you'd be right. Um they defeated Cincinnati. A hundred percent. Alabama's played yep. Utah yeah, you're right. State, you're right. You're right. is terrible. They played Texas, and I think this is a better version of Texas that we're, than we're now seeing. Who sucks? Um, they played ULM and they played Vandy. It's not a it's not a huge, not a huge pool for Alabama schedule wise. No. Um, meanwhile, Arkansas. Defeated Cincinnati, who's a top 25 quality, one of the best group of five teams there are. Um, they beat South Carolina, and South Carolina is not good, but it is an SEC school. You know what I mean? It's still a conference that's, win. That's that's like that's like saying, oh, you 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 beat you beat Indiana, Jared. I would say Purdue. South Carolina? No. Hell no forward <laughs> <laughs> then they played an fcs school Maybe uh, and play. arkansas played an fcs school and by the way didn't look good um they played was this montana state or missouri state i'm gonna guess missouri state it says missouri. MO state missouri state missouri. they played missouri state and only won by 11 they lost to texas a&m and texas a&m has shown their true colors this year um I think both of these teams kind of suck. And when I say Alabama sucks, I mean by Alabama standards. So everyone chill out by Alabama <laughs> standards. They kind of suck. Um, yeah, I, 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 saw, I saw that gangland. Um, 
on on Twitter, our good friend, uh, man, this is two weeks in a row. Uh, uh, Jeremiah on on Twitter uh, posted that CJ Stroud at 16 <laughs> passing touchdowns. Wow. Florida, Auburn, Texas and Texas A&M all combined for 15 passing touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I think both of these teams are uh, a little overrated at this point. Uh, I think Bama might be going into this game with a bit more focus than they have before, as it is the first team with a pulse they've played since Texas. So I think there'll be, I think they'll be focused. I think they'll be focused. Uh, I think they'll be like, geared in. Um, and I think they probably make a bit of an example of Arkansas. Uh, Cause what we know about Arkansas to this point is that Arkansas, they can't play defense when you let, you know, South Carolina score 30 on you. When you let Missouri state score 27 on you, when you let Texas A&M who does not have any sort of prominent offense score 21 on you, 23, 23 on you. Um, yeah. The, I feel like Bama is going to just rip them to shreds. And the fact that Alabama might be a little light in the wide receiver room, isn't going to affect them against Arkansas who, uh, as I stated, kind of sucks, and defensively speaking, at least. So, so you got Alabama to cover the sixteen and a half points. I do. I I do too. I I think Arkansas is not that good. I don't even know how they were ranked so high when they were. Uh, I think yeah. because they do have like good offensive talent. They they really do. Um, and as uh, Zach points out, Bama will be without three defensive starters. And I think that that does mean Arkansas scores some points. But again, Alabama can't keep Missouri State out of the end zone. I think Ohio, or excuse me, Ohio, I think Alabama scores whatever the hell they want offensively. Arkansas without their quarterback. Is that confirmed? Do we know that? I didn't. I did not see that. I don't, I'd have to. I'd have to look that up. I. I did not. I don't see think that that's yet. a. I don't think that's a thing. Uh, not a certain thing. Anyway. All right. Yeah, it's not true. We. What, what are you doing, Zach? Jeez. Um, yeah, I, I got I got Alabama to cover here. I just Arkansas has no business being in the top 20 here. Um, and I, I think I think Alabama will cover the 16 and a half. No, no, no question in my mind here. All right, what does Zach say? Zach says here, Bama is without three defensive starters and on offense. The offensive line hasn't looked great, which, which is true. Arkansas looks like an SEC West contender, but can they finish a big game? Finish big games. Of course, it looks like it looks like must contend Bama without their quarterback. Though defensive, they could be fine. It'll come down to whomever controls the line of scrimmage or Bryce Young just freakish freakishly making something out of nothing. I see the game more like Texas, though, for Bama. Tide wins, but it'll be ugly and a bruiser for Arkansas. Keeps it close with another heavy hitter for the second week in a row. So no. with it being a close game, so if Alabama beats them closely, that means Arkansas is going to rank up higher then, right? Is, is, is that how this works, Jared? I, I Sorry, I had a thing on my phone I had to look at. I didn't hear what you just asked me. If Arkansas keeps this close, like like the Alabama Texas game, oh, are will you Arkansas saying, move they... up higher? No, no, they won't. Yeah, I, I thought that's how this worked. So he has he has Arkansas to cover. All right, and the last three thirty game is Oklahoma State and Baylor. Uh, I'll let you go first with this one, Jared. Oklahoma State and Baylor. Interesting thing about this game to me is 
I feel like I'm a broken record. I feel like I say this every week. I know I've already said it a couple times this week. I I don't like either of these teams. I think Oklahoma State is top 10 out of default, just out of a lack of other teams to put in the top 10. This is not a top 10 team. I'm not convinced that they're better than Baylor. I think they're ranked ahead of Baylor simply because Baylor has lost. Um, and Baylor lost in a two overtime game to a decent BYU team, a pretty good BYU team. Um, Oklahoma State has an FCS school, uh, Arizona State school, who's already fired Herm Edwards to this point, uh, and Central Michigan. Not, you know, it's, I mean, Arizona State is still a Pac-12 school, but it's a bad Pac-12 school. Um, so it's, it's kind of a nothing burger of a, of a wreck of a, what's the word I'm trying to, uh, of a, of a, of a schedule. Um, if you look at Baylor, yes, they lost to BYU, but they did in two overtimes. And like I said, that was in Utah and as a decent, that's a decent Baylor team, or excuse me, a BYU team. They beat Iowa state in pretty convincing status. I'm, I'm screwing up all of my words right now. Um, Point is, is that I think Baylor's been tested and I don't think Oklahoma State has been. Uh, I look at the spread. It's only two and a half points. I I'll, I'll, I feel comfortable not taking the the at. <laughs> Damn it, gangland. I almost said it. Um, I feel comfortable uh, not taking the underdog here and uh, I'll, I'll go with Baylor. Um, By the I'm way, take- the at at two and a half points. 27 only 27 percent uh currently taking baylor well i'm not one of those 27 percent i'm i'm gonna i'll pick the underdog here i have i just do not trust this baylor team to be able to to continue scoring scoring points to be able to um keep up with oklahoma state's um offense here i re- really like how, what i'm seeing from oklahoma state here offensively i i think I think uh, I'll take Oklahoma State to cover and and beat Baylor in this game. All right, Kyle, one last game. Or excuse me, Buckeye Zach first. Yeah, Buckeye Zach here. Uh, he says, give me give me game with Baylor and Oklahoma State. Baylor isn't all what they're cracked up to be, and, o- and Oklahoma State certainly has the tools to beat them in yet another Big 12 shootout. At, at minus two and a half, just give me Baylor because I don't care. Fair all right, and the, mm-hmm. I just said fair enough. All right. All right. And the last game here, uh, let's see, we've covered uh, two Big Ten games, two SEC games, two Big 12 games. Um, we're we're going to leave out a uh, Pac-12 after dark game here. So we're, we're going to go I over to it. we're going to go over to ACC land here. And what looks to be a rainy muddy sloppy wet any other adjectives you want to put in there football game moist <laughs> moist <laughs> oh N- spikes N- C- save, State. save N- C- your butt State. save your battery on something more important than us all right spikes yes. you be safe yes. nc state and clemson too bad this isn't in Raleigh, or is, I, 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 I might have bought tickets here, Jared. <laughs> I might have bought tickets if this was in Raleigh. <laughs> uh, but nope, it's it's in it's in Clemson land here. Seven thirty. Clemson is a six and a half point favorite. Yeah. Uh, uh, first, by the way, you said it? you said Pac twelve after dark. Washington plays UCLA at uh, on Friday. And I almost put that in, but it doesn't kick off until freaking 1030 p.m. So I was just like, no, I don't I don't feel that I don't feel quite that degenerate. So um, we we went with uh, Oklahoma and TCU instead. So um, Penix (laughs) is a is a night riser. Yeah. Um, Some of that. Yeah. Nope. I, I couldn't think of anything that wasn't. Nope. Yep. All right. Over All the right. line. Uh, uh, do you want to go first or do you want me to for the Wolf Pack and Tiger game? Wolf Pack and Tiger. I got it. All I right. want to point out that 
the over under in this game is 40 points. And we talked a little bit during the Michigan and Iowa about how you only have 40 points to work with. And one of the teams is, uh, in this case, six and a half. So that makes it a little bit easier. It's not 10 and a half. Uh, yes. Six and a half is a very achievable number. If you're Clemson, it's only a touchdown, you know, 10 and a half. You would need two touchdowns essentially, or, you know, a touchdown, two field goals. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's more than two scores is the point. Um, so you take a look at this game and now on top of everything else, now we're adding weather into this game and the weather might even bring the score down that much more. It might get some heavy rainfall, the remnants of, is it Ian? Ian? What's the hurricane's name? Yeah, Ian. Ian? Uh, yeah, remnants of Ian might be, you know, over Columbia, South Carolina, and making this game even more difficult to score points. I think NC State has a quality defense, a very quality defense, and... I feel like I'm repeating the Iowa versus Michigan thing all over again, because I kind of feel like that's what this is. Um, NC State has a really good defense. I think they'll keep Clemson from scoring too much. And even though NC State's offense is pretty challenged and, and Clemson's defense is still pretty good. Um, I'm going to lean I'm going to lead NC state on this one. God, I wish it was seven and a half. <laughs> I really wish it was seven and a half. Like if this were real life betting and we you don't real life bet, we're, we're here to discourage you from real life betting. But if I were to real life bet, I would, I would try to shop around, find a seven and a half. Cause I really think it's, it's like that close. If it was so seven even, and a half, even, I would put the house on NC State, uh, Gangland says. So so you, you picked the wolf back here, Jared? I did. Um, I'd rather have them at seven and a half. Am I high fiving you? Um, you I'd rather have them at seven and a half, but I, I'll i take them at six and a half. All right. I, I agree. I this is one of those kind of games. And you look back at the history of some of these night games that that NC state has played and some of them that's been bad weather. I mean, I look at um, a few years ago when Notre Dame came into town, it was nasty. It was rainy and not many points were scored. I think, I think it was a grand total of uh, 13 points scored in that game, Jared. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't think, I don't think it's going to be uh, that bad, but yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a sloppy game. And then you got this, this good of a uh, NC state defense here. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take the wolf back here. They'll, they'll, they'll be in it to try to try to get the upset here. So yeah, I'll, I'll take the wolf pack. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm copying and pasting my analysis on on Iowa and Michigan. The The big difference being there is the four extra points that the underdogs getting. Um, I, I would uh, gangland said before he'd bet the house if he got it at seven and a half. I don't know if I'd bet the house at seven and a half at ten and a half. I'd consider it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I really like, I don't like NC state necessarily to win this game. I don't, but I think they can keep it close. I think they can keep it close for the record. 1% battery gang is not the team I would choose for Oregon trail. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's see what Buckeye Zach says I'm, here. I don't think they had electricity back then. Kabuto. Uh, Buckeye Zach says, Clemson and NC State, I have no opinion. He says, fuck Dabo. NC State covers and wins, turning Death Valley into a sea of red and white. You know, now, this dumb tradition that Clemson has about they storm the field after every win here. Can, can the other teams storm the field if they win in this game? You have enough bodies. <laughs> 
That'd be awesome. I mean, it's, way, it's only, I've been... it's only, it's only a four hour drive from Raleigh down there. So yeah, Sh- show up Wolf, Wolfpack fans show up. So I told <laughs> you, by go. the way, I was a little bit sketchy on six and a half. I'd rather have it at seven and a half. 99% at, at six and a half at six and a half points. 99% are going to Clemson. Give me North Carolina State. Don't, <laughs> don't. If 99% of the people are placing their bets in one direction, be the one. Is that 90? Is that 1% us, Jared? <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I, I'm not a real life gambler, so I don't know. I am the one percent. <laughs> all right. Uh, that is it. That is all we have here. And we just have one question to wrap things up here, Jared. And it is I have a bonus. Our, I want to do I want to do a bonus segment after this, but go ahead. All right. And here's a good and a uh question from our good uh friend and mod of our Discord, Nomad. Uh he says, What is the best time block on Saturdays? to watch a football game. So not, not necessarily Jeffrey one Ohio state's in. All right. <laughs> As I say, not necessarily this weekend, but in general, honestly, to me, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say three 30 because when you do noon game, you'd be like, Oh, I got to make sure I have lunch before then. I don't want to have to make lunch when the kickoff is and missing some of the game three 30, you're done with lunch. And then when the game's over, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll get dinner going here. Are, so. are we ta- are we talking about the window in which to co- watch college football in any given yes. weekend? Yes. Saturday. <laughs> Just Saturday. No, I, I understand. Yeah, I understand gang lane. Um, you make dips in the slow cooker. Yeah, that, that's true. All right. That's Kyle, true. I want I want to do an I want to do a bonus segment on this. A bonus segment. Yeah. What, are you, throw, what are you throwing at me? What are you throwing at me? Choose your chaos. We're going uh, with collegiate chaos. With a choose your chaos. Collegiate chaos. Yes, that's that's what I'm back to team chaos and collegiate. Yes, yes, that's what I'm leaning. That's what I'm going back to. Choose your chaos. You have to choose. You have to choose your. Uh, a top 25 team to lose this weekend. The rules are. The rules are you get reverse ranking points. So, for example, if you if you say top 25, I'm, I'm going to explain it. If you pick top, if you pick number 25 to lose and they lose, you only get one point. If you pick number one to lose and they lose, you get 25 points. So it's just the reverse. Okay. If that makes sense, that's how many points you get if you if you call it correctly. So the and the second rule is they can't be playing another top 25 team. So it has to be ranked on it has to be an unranked team beating a ranked team. And the higher that team is ranked, the more points you get. All right, well, let's let's look through here. Uh, Let me start. Let me start from the top here. So Gangland says uh, he picks number two. So, Bama, Bama, but they play a ranked team though. Yeah, that that doesn't uh, Arkansas is ranked. You can't pick that one. What about? I don't know how good of a team are there. Are they, are they a bad team? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, what about this Thursday, Jared? Uh, BYU and Utah State, but nah, I don't. I don't think Utah State's BYU's, terrible. They they are terrible. Uh, Washington. Also, and that's not for very many points. They're number nineteen. So what? That would be yeah. only six points. Washington and UCLA. Now nah, Washington's going to kill them. UCLA is pretty terrible. Now Gangland says four. he picks number four. And mm-hmm. by the way, that's that's who I'm picking. I'm picking Iowa to beat Michigan. Um, I don't think it's super likely, but it's a huge payday. You get twenty one points out of that. You do. Yes. I'm looking at other games here, Jared, and I think TCU over Oklahoma is a relatively safe one. It's not for a, a huge number of points. Um, 
you know what, Utah, go, Oregon I, 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 State, I, I, maybe that's a decent bang for the buck. I think I think I'll go with this one. It's not it's not a ton of points here. But I'll go I'll go down to SEC country, and I'll I'll pick I'll pick the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's another good up, one. Upset upsetting the Aggies. That's that's another good one. I think. Um, yeah, you they're number seventeen. So what you'd get eight points for that, and I think that's a lot more like. So you're not getting as many points as I would if mine hits, but I think yours is more likely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and that and that's how the game works, right? Um, yeah. Black guys kill that. R for uh, Rutgers for zero points. I I I hope so. That I think that's up to the backups. Um, where is the Michigan game at? Uh, the Michigan game is in Iowa City. Iowa. Yep. And it's a noon one, not a night game. Yep. It is. It is the um, Gus Johnson. Johnson special. It is. Yep. All right. Uh, that is it. I'm scrolling. That is that is the end of our show notes here, Jared. So I think I think that's a show. All right. Choose your chaos is me, Iowa over Michigan and you, um, Mississippi State. Is that who it is over Texas A&M? Yes. Is clip this now a spam channel? Uh huh. What? Uh the 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 clip this emote is for um if if people like like a segment and they think it should be turned into a one minute highlight that's how they let us know, and like when we go back and edit the video, um it's really nice to scroll through the video and find like a bunch of clip this is showing up in the bottom right hand corner because then you can just sort of go to that point figure out what people liked uh, it, it makes it it makes it uh yes shorts and sandals just makes it's just the thing that makes it easier for kyle to to find a highlight and make it yeah i apologize not i haven't created any in a while just all right yeah i know you were traveling <laughs> and stuff but just sort of need to get back on it and that's it just get back in the routine it's all good um yeah uh that's that's it for this week's show i think um i've never watched a short by the way you should um they're only a minute long they're typically kind of fun um the more you post the more the yeah. algo loves you yeah i know we know so yeah, uh, Kyle, that's it. Uh, so yeah, by the way, since we're talking about the shorts, yeah, you can check out our shorts by going to shorts.thesloopcast.com. That takes us, that takes you to the playlist of our YouTube shorts. Um, you can go to tiktok.thesloopcast.com. That takes you to our TikTok page and you can go to ig.thesloopcast.com. And that takes you to our Instagram, our handle on all social medias is just at Sloopcast. The best thing about making up a word is that you get the handle you want every time. So we're at Sloopcast on all of the things. Um, and uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, Ohio Stadium. I saw, I saw I saw this pop up on on Eleven Warriors here. Ohio Stadium receives a historical marker. As the horseshoe approaches its 100th anniversary in October, does it so need you know to be 100 to qualify? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Because this feels I, long. I, this feels long overdue. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think it's necessary. But I think they're they're doing that in honor of it being 100 years old. Yeah. I, I agree. It should have been. It should have that along time ago well you know what now that i say that out loud there also might be resistance to it because like if you get actually like put down as like a historic landmark or historic whatever and i'm not saying that this new designation is like 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 if you're like on the national registry of historic buildings or whatever it adds so state. much red tape kabuto it's state now, and according to this, there are more than 1,700 historical markers that exist in the state of Ohio. And Jared, there is one in my hometown of Columbus Grove. Oh, yeah. There is one, yeah. What is it? 
Um, it's the uh, oh, it's it's the local pool. It's just outside the corporation, and um, it still has that old uh, 1920s, 30s feel to it. But um, yeah, like 1930s, because they they built it during the the Great Depression, trying to get like, hey come help us build this and we'll pay you and trying to try to help people out, find jobs and get back into the workforce too. So it's like a public works program thing. Eh, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. I have to find exactly. Uh, yeah. It's, it's the um, municipal pool um, historical marker. Um, trying to find it here. Um yeah, it was uh, it helped helped um, Columbus it helped Columbus Grove weather the Great Depression in the 1930s. Um, yeah, I won't, I won't bore into all the details here, but yeah, it was help help people out during the Great Depression. All right, um, I want to get the exact name, um, but I'm trying. I was hoping I was going to find it in time. Um, do, 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 it doesn't look like I'm going to find it in a, in a, an appropriate amount of time, but I know that there's one in St. Clairsville as well. Um, I think I, in fact, I, I'm pretty sure anyway, that it's like, uh, has one of those historical markers on it, but I know it was a, it was a, uh, hideaway house in the underground railroad and yes that deep into ohio because keep in mind at that time west virginia was still a part of virginia uh so it was just right across the river virginia had slavery so ohio was right next to virginia at that time and virginia had slavery so um it was just a spot across the river and also uh which is right next to Kentucky. Yeah. Um, and also uh, a lot of the runaway slaves went straight to Canada at that point uh, at, at different points, uh, simply because some states, and I don't even remember if Ohio, but some states like just didn't harbor and they would send them back. And so, yeah, it's uh, there was a, there's a house in St. Clairsville. That's like a preserved Ohio did Harbor. Uh, thank you. Gangland. Um, but uh, also, like, when, like, I wonder how long and so on and so forth, like. And I don't know how old the I don't know how old the Underground Railroad house is. I don't know all the details, but yeah, um, hot takes slavery was bad. Thank you, Kaboot. I'm really glad you recharged your phone so you could offer that to us. <laughs> uh, how can you say something so bold yet so controversial? All right. But yeah, that's a historical marker. Uh, I just decided to hop into Kyle's corner there and 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 save that as well. All right, yeah, that's it, Jared. That is that is it for today's episode. All right, uh, tonight's ending music once again is the band Signals Midwest. Uh, you can find them on Bandcamp and YouTube, and down in the show notes, um, you can you can click on the link down in the video and listen to the song. Uh, especially if you're on YouTube, you don't get to hear the song. Um, on YouTube, but if you're listening to the the podcast feed, then you do get to hear the song. But if you want to give them a follow uh, on YouTube, I do still provide a link in the show notes. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Signals Midwest. <laughs>